Welcome to the Choice, Change and Action podcast, where you get to choose, change and take action to create a different today and a different future. These are my stories of choice, change and action, along with the phenomenal guests I have on here. From a really young age, I've always desired to create a change in the world. The planet has been a constant inspiration to me and Access Consciousness has shown me the tools to know that anything is possible and I keep choosing. What are you going to choose? Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Choice, Change and Action podcast. You are with me, Simone Melissa's, your host. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> and then you also got Sarah Watt. So uh, we're actually pointing at each other at the moment. So if you're listening to this on Spotify and you want to flip on over to YouTube and check it out as well, then you can get to see our bright, shining faces here in, in London, uh, London, UK, we are in. So welcome to this podcast. And Okay, so today um, we're in London at the moment. Uh, we've been here for Dr. Dane here's Being You Changing the World class, which was, oh my goodness, talk about changing the world. OMG. Yes, and, <laughs> and it's so good to, to head off traveling again. It's, it's, yeah. it's freaking fabulous. I think I'm on a nine week tour and I think I'm in week seven, yep. I think. Yeah, yep. seven. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So um, anyway, it's been lots of fun, lots of stuff happening. Heading to the castle next week for business done different class and you know Rome and then home for three weeks and it's just like wow how do we get so lucky <laughs> and uh so I'm staying here with Sarah at the moment and on her journey which ladies and gentlemen if you don't know you know how far away Australia is it's a friggin long it's way very away far. yeah yeah it's it very is. far <laughs> so when she was traveling um you went okay so you went where had you go Brisbane to Darwin and then Darwin to London okay and so I was chatting her in Darwin, uh -huh. chatting to her in Darwin. She's like, oh, my flight's been delayed two hours or now it's, you know, two and a half hours or et cetera. So tell me what was going on for you, because this is the theme I sort of want to talk about. Well, anyone traveling, you know, when you're traveling a very long way, like overseas, it's, it's quite full on. It's a big thing for your body. It's a lot of time. It's a lot of sitting down. It's a lot of. Um, yeah, so I was I was kind of headlong into looking at a seventeen hour flight. Um, I, look, whoa, 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 whoa! <laughs> because I know what that's like. I just did one of those from Australia to Dallas, and you're like, I, I was like, you know, first world problems. I was in business class that seventeen hours and freaking out because I was like, that's a hell of a long way, you yeah. know. Yeah. And then you were in economy. economy. <laughs> yeah. So I put in for my upgrades and I knew I wasn't, I had the feeling by the time I got to Darwin, I wasn't going to get them and my flight had been delayed. And so I was looking about an eight hour layover in Darwin. <laughs> the joys of traveling. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but that's actually what it came down to was the really joys did. of traveling. Yeah. And the joy of everything really. Like I just remember we were coming into land in Darwin and flying over the Kakadu National Park, which is a very, very big chunk of one of our states here in in well not here but in australia in mm. the northern territory and it's this beautiful national park that has holds so much wildlife so much flora and fauna and a lot of our native um, aboriginal people still live there and inhabit the land and it's phenomenal and we're flying over it and i was like you know what i'd love to have more adventure in my life and i lead a pretty adventurous life <laughs> But I guess I'm also realizing that you can never have enough adventure either. And yeah, I was flying over the Kakadu National Park like, oh, what would it take to be in that national park soon? Four wheel driving or seeing some of this beautiful country and then pulling into Darwin and realizing my flight had been delayed. And I was like, OK, well, Darwin's basically part of the Kakadu National Park. I was like, well, what if I just made this an adventure? I like that. Yeah. And I just as a, as a little sidebar. Um, I, I know you haven't been to Kakadu and and I went there years and years ago and you're so correct. I felt like I was in like this National Geographic show, like we yeah. were driving along. First of all, we go to this swimming hole and it's got a sign up there saying there may be crocodiles found in this area. And I'm like, there may be crocodiles found in this area. <laughs> it's not like a definite no, it's not a definite yes. And I was like, yeah, that's a hard no. <laughs> I, I, I'm not swimming in that water hole, you know. But then there's this like blue goanna that comes out and then mm. we're driving along and this black snake pops up and there was a kangaroo. And I honestly, it, I felt like, you know, there was a director going, right, cue the black snake. You know, it was like, like all these animals were there. It was just phenomenal. And I didn't really explore it that much. It was like a full day, but I would so love to go back there as well. So it's like, so what adventures can you ask for in life? Like, 
you know, there's this advert out at the moment. I can't remember what it's for, um, but Ewan McGregor is one of the guys who, like, he's on the advert and he's saying, you know, when you get older, are you going to be going, oh, I wish I'd bought that thing or I wish I'd bought that car, I wish I'd bought that, or are you actually going to be asking, I wish I'd gone more places? Yeah. And to me, it's like there is such a joy in traveling and such a joy in exploring and a joy in that, that adventure, yep. but also not – making it look like it has to look a certain way. And that's that's sort of what I wanted to talk to you about. So this month in my Choice Change and Action membership, which if you haven't checked it out, you can, uh, I have a call coming up and it's called, it's only weird if you make it weird, <laughs> which just makes Best me title. laugh. I know, Best as, title. yeah, everyone laughs when you hear it because how often does something show up in your life that isn't going the way that you thought mm. it should uh, or you're choosing something that nobody else has chosen, you know, et cetera. And then you go, oh, it's weird. And you only make it weird when it goes against what you thought should show up or nobody else is choosing. You go, oh, I'm being weird here. I'm being weird is based on nobody else is doing the same thing. If everyone else was doing the same thing, it'd be then, normal. Then it'd be normal. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I mean, there's this great. Uh, Life of Brian, Monty Python, such an old movie, but I love this one scene in it. And there's like this, you know, like a whole lot of people there and they're all yelling out, we are all individuals, like at the same time, <laughs> right? And this one guy just put goes, uh, yeah, I'm not. <laughs> it's like brilliant. So what if what you've decided is weird about you is not weird about you? And it's like, and what would you choose? And so one of the things that, you know, when I was talking to Sarah, it's like, okay, so she didn't get her upgrade. She was like delayed in Darwin, you know, all of these things going on. And you were like, I'm not sad and I'm not cranky and I'm none of those things. Yeah. Well, one of, uh, you know, there's so many tools in access consciousness that are phenomenal. And the more access I do, the more I realize it's the beginner tools that <laughs> tend to help me the most. Yep. And this was a definite you, your uh your point of view creates your reality your reality doesn't create your point of view like it was literally a moment where i could have gone down this fork in the road towards being like pissed off you know angry and plus not just looking down the barrel of a 17 hour flight in economy it was a full flight i think there were like three <laughs> or four spare seats there so yeah, yeah I, I felt it was just this total very obvious moment of, of choice and I was like I either go down this way or I go down this way and I was like okay I'm gonna go speak to this guy at the at the lounge and and ask some questions I said look I know the flight's overbooked I'm not gonna get my upgrade I said but is there any chance of getting you know a seat with a spare seat beside me he's like okay I can move you to this row I'm gonna block this seat for you Aww. and yeah, yeah so I ended up with we were in a row of three but I was on the aisle and the middle seat was free so it was like one small win but yeah. And, you know, it, because I was willing to change my perspective, I mean, it was a 17 hour flight. I got on that flight and passed out for 11 hours. The first 11 hours of the flight, I was gone, like have my noise cancer. And, you know, I'm a seasoned traveler. It's been a couple of years, but I've definitely got the hacks to to play out when traveling. But I know for I just know that if I if I chose to board that plane pissed off, it changes everything. My whole journey would have been one where everything that matched that energy of being pissed off would have shown up. Yeah, that's, thank you for saying that. Yeah, that's exactly what shows up. So like what area of your life, <laughs> excuse me, <clears throat> it's like what area are you of your life are you choosing this um, emotion yep. of, you know, being pissed off, frustrated, you know, sad, cranky, you know, oh, whatever that is. Yeah. And then you end up attracting that. Yeah. 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 And it's like, it's, it's almost like you, you, the universe just gives you more of it. And this is where it was really such a, your point of view creates your reality moment for me. Because I was like, if my point of view is I'm on an adventure, how much fun can I have? I went and bought a bunch of snacks. Like I was like, cause you know, you're like trying to be good when you travel, but I was like, F this, I'm going into economy. I'm going to drink I'm gonna go to the lounge and have a few red wines I'm gonna buy myself some nice snacks to have on the plane you know I did some of those comfort and I just went for like the joy of everything and I got on that plane and literally my body just went okay 11 hours and then I woke up had a couple of cups of coffee watched a movie fell back asleep for a few more hours it was literally and then I got to London yeah came here to our room showered and went to class and yeah. went about my day I was not jet lagged I was not tired I was not it was just 
like just, point of view just step 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 one step at a time you know i remember many many years ago i was in los angeles and i put in for an upgrade to come home to australia and usually i was getting them because i was like higher up and and i didn't get it mm. and i remember being at the airport in la and i was like shit and the first thing i did was i looked down at my clothes and i went i'm not prepared because <laughs> you I'm get not... pajamas in yeah business you class. do they yeah, yeah. You. and i was like i'm not prepared for for economy <laughs> so i looked around and um and they had these uh like sweat the uh trackies you know yeah like the sweater jumper things or whatever that yeah. just had a big los angeles on it yeah. you know yeah. a gray one i was like yeah. all right i'm getting that because that had a hoodie and stuff like mm -hmm. that and i was like yeah hoodie can put my arms in it and i can just like snuggle in that because i was like i'm not going to get a blanket yeah i'm not going to get <laughs> get a pillow i'm not going to get you know my mm. pajamas etc but i looked at okay so now what next and it was funny because i was on the flight with a um a friend of mine and same thing when they it was so funny when they came around to give the meals and this friend of mine was like oh no not at the moment you know maybe later and because they were so used to traveling in business class the steward just looked at them and went uh yeah it's now or never you know <laughs> now or starve <laughs> yeah and it was like we don't like you know give you food on demand so i mean it was funny we were laughing about it and can i give you a tool to use throughout life if anything in your life is occurring right now where you've decided you have a problem ask what's so funny about this I'm not laughing about it yeah like really what's so funny about this I'm not laughing about it so right now it's like you know pick something that shows up in your life that you've decided you have a problem with you you know you think oh my god how am I going to handle this or you know it could be a bill that's just come in or mm -hmm. you could have just had a relationship breakup or your rent just you know got increased or you know your kid came home and just had a fight with someone or anything okay pick anything that you've already put into this category of oh shit mm. you know that oh shit category mm. and then go what's so funny about this i'm not laughing about it yep. because there's something that we uh i wasn't going to talk about this but apparently i am um there's something that we you know a new tool in access and that's the way access consciousness works it's like there's these new tools that show up all the time uh, i mean i've been working with access for 21 years and that's the thing I love about it. It's mm. like, you know, every class isn't the same, every manual, it's like it changes all the time. Mm. And more tools show up. And also like whoever comes along to class and they're like, hey, I've got a question. And it changes the energy. And yep. every single person in the world, every single person in the world, including you listening to this, has something to offer. You really do. So what if you started being all of you and offered whatever that tool is, whatever the awareness is that that you have, it's like, what a gift to the planet and what a gift to consciousness. And something that showed up recently is what we called emotional, of course, we shortened it because we shorten everything in, in access mm -hmm. is emotional povads, right? So emotional povads is the points of view that you're avoiding and defending. And it's, I've been running this so much. And it's so interesting, because anytime you have this, like, this feeling, mm. um, like, I feel sad, I feel frustrated, I feel cranky, you know, oh, I didn't get upgraded, I didn't get this, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, so this is all you have to do. You say all the emotional povads creating that, destroy and uncreate it, right and wrong, good and bad, pock and pod, all nine shorts, boys, povads and beyonds. And that is the new clearing statement as well. And if you've been listening to my podcast, you'll know the clearing statement. You don't need to know exactly how it works. It's basically like, just play with this tool. Like right now, get all the feelings that you have. Like maybe if it's towards someone or towards something and it's like, and then what I want you to do is put your attention on it. Breathe, don't forget to breathe. And then ask all the emotional povads that I have with this person or with this thing, destroy and uncreate it, right and wrong, good and bad, pock and pot all nine, shorts, boys, povads and beyonds. And I'm finding that so much stuff is dissipating and it's like my head has just got this, um, uh, like a, the stuff is being just taken away. Like there's no, and there's this sense of space in mm -hmm. my head. Yeah. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. So um, I also wanted to ask you, because you you cracked me up the other day when you have some, you actually have some good travel tips. I do. To make life joyful. So Literally, if you need travel hacks, I'm, I'm go the for person it. to come give, to. Give us some travel hacks. Well, I mean, you've got to, you've got to know where you're sitting on the plane first of all like and you taught me so, a lot of this actually. okay but tell the story can you tell the story about your sure. your boyfriend so, the other so, day <laughs> yeah so my partner was also traveling to europe and he's traveled internationally a bit but not well i mean there's 
not as ma- not many people in the world that travel as much as we do. Um, and I said, oh, you know, babe, where, where are you, what's your seat? Where are you sitting on the plane? He's like, I don't know. And I was like, oh, Jesus, <laughs> get your laptop out right now. Let's, let's sort this out. And so we went on and found him a good seat. And I was like, okay, so he was doing Brisbane to Doha, which is about a 14 hour flight. And I said, okay, so what are you going to wear on the plane? And he's like, well, I've got my jeans and my boot and my sh- boot, my boots and my shirt. And I was like, <laughs> no. <laughs> No, 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 no. We need to go shopping and buy you a tracksuit. You need noise cancelling headphones. Yeah, so it's like... So hang on, you've got to walk it through like when you get changed because that was beautiful. Yeah, that well, part. even the timing, exactly. I was like, well, depending on the time of flight, you can change before you get on the plane. But otherwise, just get on the plane, get changed, get cosy. But then you've got to time it at the end because most of these flights land, land around breakfast time. So they do a breakfast service generally two hours before the plane lands. So somewhere around two and a half hours, you smell the breakfast. There's movement. The lights are coming back on. That's the time to get up and get changed back into your, you know, your good clothes. So then you, you're changed, you're fresh, you have a little bird bath in the, in the bathroom, <laughs> brush your teeth, get yourself freshened up. And then you're fresh for breakfast. You sit and have your breakfast. They come and clean up. And then you watch everyone get up after breakfast. And there's a line for the toilet. And you're sitting there watching a movie, cozy and comfy, back in your nice clothes. That was my favorite part, your hack. It was just like, yeah, when you smell the breakfast, that's when you get up and you get changed. Yeah. 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 And, you know, I spoke to Hayden, my partner, when he he's like, oh, my God. (laughs) Like, every HP was good, though. He followed everything I said, and it really changed things for him. I love it. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. So, um... I'm all about the ease. It's like, what, what, mm. how can you have more ease and joy in everything that no matter what you're doing or what your day brings, it's like, what if everything was about that? <laughs> so let's talk more about that. Yeah. All about the ease. Yeah. Well, I've, I've, I guess for me, I'm starting to realize, you know, a lot of what I'm discovering now in access and, and I guess the next chapter in my journey is, is about finding and, and being and having more of me. And, and, you know, there's a lot that's been going on in my personal life lately, you know, and the world. And like, I don't think there's anyone that's not waking up every day, not really sure about what the day is going to bring. And yeah, I guess it's really a time for me to look at like, what is being me and what is having and being more of me look like? And I'm realizing that I'm actually someone that tends to lean a lot towards ease and joy. So and really like then you're like well how do you do that and i was playing with it today walking through the streets of london it's really just a matter of asking a question mm. like that's all it is and that's the beauty okay of- so what are some of the questions you would ask like so today yeah like i was strolling through well you know there were little things like i really needed to go to the bathroom and i was like okay what would it take for me to find a bathroom and i just went down this path down that path found a bathroom I love horses and I was in Hyde Park and I was like, oh, I'd love to see some horses today. And then I heard this noise to my right and I turned and there's this field with all these riders riding their horses around. Like it was really just any, any question that comes up, there's no wrong question that you, you can ask as long as you ask it with not really a result in mind, but also knowing that whatever you ask for will show up. It might not be right then and there, and it might not be exactly how you were hoping it would, but if you're willing to ask a question, mm. yeah. You know, it's interesting because I was just talking to Gary Douglas, who's the founder of Access Consciousness, and one of the books he wrote is called The Place. And if you haven't read it or listened to it, it's on Audible as well, please do. do it. It's 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 amazing. And uh, the podcast, my 100th episode, was actually with Gary Douglas, and we were talking about The Place movie and, you know, Elagar, et cetera. And, I've been, I would really, really, really like that to get out there to be a feature film, right? Mm. And in my world, I know that's going to occur, but I have no idea how it's going to occur. So I've been using the energy, what we call need and tug. And that energy of need and tug, it's like, there's a difference. Like need is is like, you know, oh, I need this. I need that. I need you to be here. I need that. Greedy, like. Yeah. It's got that like. Needy, greedy. Yeah. Yeah. And that you're lacking if you don't have something or someone. Whereas need and tug is this energy of going, all right, I would like this movie to be out there. And then you sort of tug in the energy and the people and the possibilities. Like even need and tug energy is I need to go to the bathroom. What would it take for a bathroom to show up? So when you are asking questions and it's like you have that energy of need and tug, you're not vested in the outcome, but you sort of know the universe has got your back. 
Like you, you out walking, you know, you're not going to piss yourself, right? <laughs> I was like, well, there's a lot of trees around here, but somehow I don't want to get arrested in London for like public urination yeah. or stuff. But you said you don't know how it's going to show up, but you know something's going to show up, yeah. you know? Yeah. So, or you'll walk into the, the shop where that person is, is just like, yeah, sure. Like use mine or something. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Like things show up. And I went to this um, this party the other night, this launch of a of a short film by a friend of ours, Her, um, Hilary Peachy, Peachy, and uh, which was amazing. It was wonderful, and I knew that there were some people there that I could meet and should meet. It just pinged me. I was like, okay, I have to go there, and so I went. And then I met this lady there. Um, her name is Imogen. She's so beautiful and so lovely. And she actually directed part of series six of Peaky Blinders, which is on Netflix, and it's phenomenal. I, I love, love it. that show. Yeah. And I met with her today and Dane here, and we had breakfast together, and we spoke about, because I didn't know much about the film industry. So, no. and I love the way I, I, like with me, I'm like with all these different businesses, there's some that I know about, I know how they're run, or, you know, you can always, always receive more information. But I don't really know much about the film industry. So I was like, can you fill me in? And I was asking her questions and I got sort of like the business side of it cool. and how it's, it is behind it. But then also what she knows and da, da, da. And it was this amazing breakfast. And then I spoke to Gary afterwards and I was like, hey, you know, I was like, I'd love you to meet Imogen. So she might fly down to Italy when we're down there. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. But however that works out. I don't have an answer in following the energy and having that ease in your world is not about having an answer. Like you said, it's about being in question and allowing the universe to literally gift you like possibilities. Yeah. Like, and yeah. Yeah. And I just love looking at what I have in front of me, like, okay, today, you know, I have no idea how, what could show up. And this is what I have. I'm in London, you know, like whatever that is. And then you just start going, okay, so where can I go to find something fun? Where can I go to have more joy and more ease today? Like even when you're working, if what you have in front of you right now is your computer and you know you're going to be staring at that thing for the next six hours, it's like, okay, well, where do I, go, where do I find the joy in this moment? And it's yeah. really like the moment you ask that question, you just feel things stop being so like this and it just goes boop, boop. And I know I'm using my hands, but basically it's like things get bigger and more spacious and yeah. you just start to find just different things show up. It's just, it's just magic. So I'm also going to ask you, I mean, one of my favorite, I'm going to ask you what your favorite tool is, um, but I'm going to say my favorite tool because it might be the same. And then I've already said my first, you and have then to come you up with another one. No. <laughs> <laughs> is, um, and I, I use this like every day is 10 second increments because what I find I do is when I wake up in the morning and, you know, maybe, you know, I don't know, jumping out of the shower and it's like, I start looking at my day and mm. I start looking at like, Oh, this, 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 like, do I have a class? Do I have meetings? It's like, or, you know, anything. And then I notice what my head does. It's like, I almost go, Oh, this, 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 yeah. this, and start to, plan it out and then I go what I've noticed I've been doing in the past few months is go oh I'm aware of what I where I need to be like obviously it's like well I've got to show up to a class or a meeting etc <laughs> but I'm, I'm aware of where I have to be but then I do this thing of like just going okay I'll destroy and uncreate everything that is so that even more possibilities can show up and everything mm -hmm. at that is times of good study and right and wrong good and bad pock and puddle nine shorts boys proverbs and beyonds and then I go okay so this 10 seconds so it's sort of like I get this download of what could occur and then go 10 seconds, this 10 seconds, what will I choose? This ten, next 10 seconds, what will I choose? Next 10 seconds, what will I choose? And it is a tool in access consciousness, as you said, in one of the foundation classes. Mm. Like it's in, it's one of the most basic tools you learn. And it's people are like, what? Live your life in 10 seconds. And it's like, yes, you can actually choose in 10 seconds. And when you start to choose in 10 seconds, it creates that ease that you can have in your world. And like I said before, allowing more possibilities to show up because you haven't um, avoided other possibilities by going, nope, this is what I'm doing. Nope, this is what I'm doing next. This is what I'm doing. This is what I'm doing. No, I can't do that. It's not Tuesday. You know, can't have tacos. It's, you know, that's <laughs> taco, taco Tuesday. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, you just allow things to show up and then you actually increase your level of receiving as well. Mm. Oh my God, receiving? Don't dare receive more than what you're currently word. receiving. Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, mine, I, I, when you say my favorite tool, I mean, it's it's a variation of that. I mean, 
I don't call it 10 second increments of choice, but what I love about that tool is it gets you out of control. You can't control anything. And yeah, for, I mean, you've got 10 seconds of control and then it's over. It's like, I guess for me, it's, it's question. Um, and looking at, like I was saying before, it's like, it's like that thing. It's like this continual question. And really what I've, I've learned a lot lately is, is letting go of controlling everything. And that's, it's kind of, you can't really, for me, I can't really put it into one tool in particular. It's, it's a lot about asking questions, a lot about, a lot about lowering my barriers, Mm. um, a lot about willing to be showing up, willing, being willing to show up as more of me. Um, like there's a lot of, so you've mentioned that twice now. Mm. What is that for you? Showing up as more of you, being more of you. Oh, it's such a journey that I'm like, just feel like I've cracked just the tiniest bit of at the moment. Um, it's, 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 I would struggle to try and put it into words. It's something very fresh for me at the moment. And, you know, it, over the past, especially COVID times, because we were sort of forced into sort of a bit of uh, like non-movement, like we were sort of stagnant for a little while, really. That was kind of the start of it, but even that wasn't really, I still wasn't really choosing it then. It's it's a level of vulnerability that I'm really just starting to discover. And I think it's really about, you know, access describes vulnerability as being that open wound, as being just willing to be there in that moment and receive everything. And And that's pretty huge. So, yeah. It is pretty huge in, I mean, that place of no judgment. And I was actually listening to a telecall of Gary Douglas's the other day, um, Need and Tug is mm. what it's called. Mm. And it's an older telecall that he did. It's available in Access Consciousness Shop. And one of the calls I was listening to, he was talking about how so many people ask for stuff to show up in their life and then they're willing to receive, you know, the good stuff, the great stuff, or even the, oh, this is a little bit difficult, you know. Mm-hmm. He was like, but you guys are not willing to receive everything. Yeah. And he was like, I'm even willing to receive the hard stuff. And that's what I've been asking for recently. It's like, I don't want to cut my awareness off for anything or anyone. It's like, what would it take to have more awareness each and every day, even if nobody else gets it? Yeah, well, that's where you got to be willing. And that's where it's a little, can be a little bit tough because you can feel like you're alone, but you're really not. And when you're willing to receive even the tough stuff, if you're still asking for ease, the tough stuff can be ease like it really can even the stuff that you think how the fuck am I ever going to handle this if you're willing to be you and keep keep true to that and keep true to you and you know the five elements of intimacy is another great one which I'm sure you've mentioned before and it talks a lot about um in Gary's book um sex is not a four-letter word is it sex is not a four-letter word but But relationship relationship. oftentimes is I love that yeah (laughs) Yeah. And these five elements of industry, I mean, for me, it's just really become this place of getting to know me. Mm. Yeah. And the five elements of intimacy, in case you don't know what they are, is gratitude, trust, allowance, vulnerability, and honor. And it's about having that with you. And yes, I do talk about it a lot. It's one of my favorite, you know, all time tools. Yeah. So, and I also just want to mention too, the mantra of access consciousness is all of life comes to us with ease, joy, and glory. Like all of life comes to me with ease, joy, and glory. Mm. So any of those moments too, that are like, you're like, what? You know, all of life comes to me with ease and joy and glory. All of life comes to me with ease and joy and glory. And go out there and have way too much fun. Like truly. Yeah. Be as weird as you be, which is being as different as you be so that you can like, create everything you would like and actualize everything you'd like and have the adventures that that you you can be choosing it's not just something that you put outside of you it's like choose it like choose it choose it choose it choose it so um thank you so much sarah for coming on here today thank you um if you want to find out more about sarah you can go to accessconsciousness.com she's a facilitator on there and you also have your own website yep sarahwatt.com.au dot au 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 and then your instagram handle is swat 81 s what 81 swat 81 i love it so and ladies and gentlemen if you'd like to find out more about access consciousness please go to accessconsciousness.com um, you can go to my website also, simonemillises.com, but you guys probably know where all that is. And if you want to check out the Cho- Choice, Change and Action membership, which is a monthly membership, and you get a call with me 
um, we this year we started theming them and that's why this month is called it's only weird if you make it weird <laughs> and then that you also get there's a guest speaker on each month as well it's amazing um, and then yeah it is and mm. then you also get which is one of my favorites is it's called a hot seat so somebody you know we say what time that's going to be and if you are available at that time you put your name in and we randomly pick someone and they get a private session with me, which everyone can watch. Well, we're all watching, basically. Yeah, it's a bit very of voyeurism. <laughs> voyeuristic, yeah. But it works and it's it a does. contribution. They're always so, amazing. Yeah. And there's a little WhatsApp group, et cetera. So we get to contribute to each other in a really different way. And that's a monthly membership, but you can just join for one month if you like, or you can join for as many months, you whatever you want. Yeah. So thank you so much for joining me here. And, and thank you also for the gratitude that you guys send me. Um, it really actually keeps me choosing to do the podcast each and every week because the gratitude I get, like whether it's emails or I see you in a class or whatever, it's just like, I'm really grateful. Thank you so much. Thank you for you. Be you and change the world. Thank yeah. you. Bye. Bye everyone. If you enjoyed this podcast, please make sure to hit the follow or subscribe button on your favorite listening platform to get notified of new episodes. We read all the reviews, so if there's any topic you would like to hear about, let us know. If you'd like to know more about the tools, information, and classes mentioned in the podcast, head on over to simonemillises.com and follow me on Instagram at simonemillises or the podcast has its very own link on Instagram at choice, change, and action. Don't forget, you can download the show notes. And lastly, have way too much fun today.